if the Diwali Mahur trading gave you a glimpse of hope, then today would have robbed you of all the good feelings. In fact, today the story of retail will reflect one or more of these bullet points: out of money, more stocks down 20 to 50 percent, portfolios falls more than Nifty, feeling sick as soon as you start seeing your portfolio, and averaging money is nearly gone. The current feeling also would be a mix of low confidence, not just in stock market but probably even at home or at work. A feeling of helplessness: what to do, what not to do, what did I do wrong? Feeling of disgust: this could be with the decision makers that could be with yourself and in some cases if the losses are really high then the family may also be giving you a feeling of dejected making you feel low believe me this is not you alone everyone in retail has one or more of these syndromes right now and how they will avoid it when reliance is falling 3 3.5% in a single day that too for no big reason atel down for 11 straight days and in the nugget section today i'll talk about why i feel that today's bearishness was totally overdone why there was no merit in today's fall hi everyone welcome to the update of 4th november now i got the old dashboard back just to give you an idea of the redness in nifty 50 mnm has been surprising everyone in the auto pack only mnm is up and towards the second half of the day hcl tech infosys sbi they recovered overall sbi contributed most to nifty mnm was next tech mahindra sipla hcl tech reliance alone dragged nifty down 20% today followed by hdfc bank 7% Atel 6% followed by Sun Pharma ICICI Bank now Sun Pharma's bad news is actually future dated 2% impact on the forecast sales of the entire next financial year and Sun Pharma was beaten down 5% today in a single day IOC for no reason was beaten down yet again that is because again there is some bad news by some agencies in the US about the oil outlook and IOC reported the least margin so fourth or fifth time consecutively ioc is being beaten again so what was up on next 50 out of the eight stocks that were up info edge which is nokri bajaj holdings pnb mother sansumi and bosch two of these are auto ancillary one of them is parent of one of the largest auto companies in the country what was down indian oil dlf tvs motor tata power bhcl there was only a tail today oil and gas was the longest in the fall nothing is making money for investors right now the battle is to be in the sector which is losing less money or just move to cash but then no one knows when markets will bounce back recover most money investors have lost in coal that's coal india the entire sector is defined by one stock only banking has made a little money in the last 15 days see the carnage today in oil and gas no oil did not cross 80 or drop below 70 it was hovering around 74 it has been around 74 for nearly 2 months now just that it jumped from 72 to 74 look at banks 1% down for such a large sector now this is lot more than bank nifty now within this gloom there are certain opportunities also this is a new set of metrics that i have created 10.5% is the dividend yield of indian oil corporation after today's fall bpcl 7.5% chennai petro 8.6% what that means is if they just give as much dividend as they have given in last few quarters then this will be your return pre tax all three of them are more than fixed deposit the tax rate is same as fixed deposit and if they gain anything in next one or two years that is in addition to the dividend you will get another example coal india 9% dividend yield now nifty's fall of 1.3% bank nifty's fall of 1% It's not that they have not fallen this much in recent past. The reason these were especially bad today was the entire ecosystem around India was looking good today. US markets were fine, the Asian markets were looking good, and in fact after the Mahura trading on Diwali, most of the retail people were also a little relaxed. No one was expecting a rally perhaps, but no one was expecting a fall of this ferocity. Look at Airtel not a single green hcl tech five straight reds infosys 
11 days 3 greens only 8 reds icici four straight reds when hdfc was falling icici was holding fort good part is nifty stocks most of them are still in 90% or above range the first number is current price by 52 week high the second number is 52 week low by 52 week high there was a huge recovery in it today the stocks were down only but then they recovered so IT was perhaps the best sector of the day nearly all stocks were lot higher than the day's low look at the impact of market cap such big cut, red cuts in most stocks but SBI was up 1.1% as a result the entire sector was down 0.2% only in the auto sector there was only one stock standing today Mahindra volumes are however good for most of the sector defense companies some of them came up with good results over the weekend zen technologies down 0.7% only in fact it opened at days high but then it got pulled down by the sentiment of the day if tomorrow is slightly better day then zen technologies will hit a upper circuit mostly in the metal pack only nalco is looking a bit promising that's in the green vedanta is being flagged as a stock with high dividend 9.9% now note as the stock falls the dividend yield will increase and as the stock goes up the dividend yield will reduce look at the dividend yield for the oil pack and these two companies are not even in the red zone no reds again no reds no reds coal india 9% dividend yield no place to hide in edible consumption nestle and dabar are in red current price is 52 week low literally but these are 0.8 this is not a very low number like 0.4 0.5 same with dabar 0.8 0.73 the day market recovers this stock will be up 78% mrs bector investment banking while there is no red hair there is no red hair however still there is a bit of profit booking happening now that is because all the stocks literally are way way away from 52 week lows there is lot of money on the table that is why some of these falls today were sharp cngl1 6% motal oswal 3.5% and most of these stocks opened at the highest point of the day and then came down because there was no buying in the market only three stocks in green with respect to volumes the dashboards are not pretty at all today nifty down 1.3% bank nifty nearly 0.9% energy 2.6% next 50 and auto 1 and 1/2 and 1% fi is sold today also di is bought today also both of them were net sellers on the mohra trading day infosys and sbi were the only green stocks gold around 78.5 silver has corrected that's because diwali is over now bitcoin is going to get really volatile that's because us elections will happen tomorrow night and the result will nearly be known on 6th however it will take up to december end or january to finalize the president that's a really long process now based upon that outcome the crypto market will rock or it will crack there is a bit of profit booking due in both of us markets and crypto so i won't be surprised if this number is below 65000 in a day or two and there is a sea of red in these stocks irrespective of who wins and if that happens there will be only one winner that's berkshire hathaway they are sitting on record cash piles because they have sold off another 25% of their holding in apple the month did not start well a red that's because i sold infosys to create a little bit of cash on mohra day i sold tejas networks motia loswal a bit of profit booking so i could mark this area as green now for mohra trading i bought silver etf i also bought a bit of motilal's mid cap etf also i'm reaching my limit of 5 units there so i'll now have to scout for more etfs or mutual funds to move my money that's because i'm aggressively moving money from stocks to etf and mutual fund in line with my swp theory today i have bought iocl hpcl zen technologies there was also fusion i bought a bit of it on mohra trading day to average lower and that was down 5% today Now I also was really sad the entire day today that's because my portfolio was in deep reds 2 to 2.5% down and I thought a lot about it I could not make sense of most of the theory that was floating around on news channels or on news websites 
I'll take you through five of them. First one, US election uncertainty. See in India, half of us or maybe 90 of us don't even know which of them is Republican or Democrat between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Do we know what changed when Donald Trump became president? Do we know what changed when Donald Trump got out and Joe Biden became president? Nothing literally changes in the big long term. This uncertainty will go in two days. The IT lobby is mostly with Kamala Harris. The industrial lobby is mostly with Trump. But the decision making is not autocratic. It is not that Donald Trump will decide something if he wins. And that will be the final thing in the US economy. So this theory impacting Indian market does not make any sense to me. US interest rates. I have already mentioned many, many times that the interest rate cut of last time was not sufficient. People will expect more. Most probably on Thursday, I think that's the day when this will be revisited. 0.25% cut will be there. Nothing will change. There is another cut due in December. After that, economy will change in US. The president part will be taken care. Interest rates will be low by about 100 to 125 basis points. This interest rate, whether it happens or not, will not change anything in the US. In any case, the economy is looking good. Who is not buying cars or homes or who is jobless right now? The jobless claims are at the lowest in last several years since pandemic. The US guys don't have a problem, but India has a problem. <laughs> when did Ukraine war start and when did the war involving Israel start? Which all countries is Israel fighting? All I'm saying is oil prices, if they were around 120, 125, it would have been a problem. They are around 75, $3 less, $3 more. What is the problem? And I have mentioned that multiple times that oil marketing companies want oil to be low. The oil refining companies want the oil to be high. What is happening these days? Whichever direction oil goes, all companies are beaten down. Why? There is absolutely no rationale. There is absolutely no logic in buying selling decisions. Actually, there is no buying happening, only selling. And that is the time to buy. Dividend yield is looking good. And hence, I am buying oil companies for now. I have shared this detail earlier also, just re-emphasizing. Purchases of stock in trade. This is Indian Oil Corporation consolidated 10,000 crores. What is the sale number? Slightly less by 6,000 crore. What is expense number? About 14,000 crore more is stock in trade. You can look on Google what stock in trade is. And the big guys are bearish. Bearish on whom? Indian companies. Yes, they are bearish on crude. Crude will be down. Crude will be around 70, maybe less than 70. Why will Indian oil suffer? It is predominantly an oil marketing company. Are they reducing the diesel prices? ATF prices were actually increased over the Diwali weekend, just after Diwali. So why are these companies falling? No logic. If you have been watching this channel, I've been saying weak Q2 earnings since beginning of Q1. If a person like me knows Q2 will be weak, then the big guys obviously know. How will big guys make money? When retail buys at the highest level, which all of us did, and they sell at low levels, which all of us are doing right now. Exactly playing to the script. Now I can tell you in writing today that in Q3, news channels will report all earnings in comparison to Q2 not why on why that is because all the big guys would have filled their entire tanks with stocks and q3 earnings will look prettier than q2 numbers 17 percent jump 20 percent jump economy is looking good the problems are over and then retail will start buying yes fis are selling are they leaving the country the foreign reserves are a little down but not substantially rupee is hovering around 84 it is not weakening very stiffly if rupee will go to 86 then there is a cause for panic i think fis are selling and keeping money in cash they might have bought a lot of fno but i don't think they are leaving the country to china or to japan or any other country in fact when interest rates in us are cut the bond yields will no longer be that lucrative us markets are also at an all-time high i don't think there is much to invest there the bullion gold silver that is also at nearly lifetime high where do you want to invest a stock market that has fallen 10 percent for a nation that is growing at six seven eight percent why would you leave that the only thing we could do as a country make them feel slightly more welcome don't kick them out at every juncture, at every moment. Don't make them feel unwanted. Just as a disclaimer, as of today, I am literally fully invested because I had to today also sell Infosys to create money to buy the oil stocks. Hope this section was useful. Thanks for watching. I will see you tomorrow.